Uh, so, good morning. Uh, welcome to the third and final day of the Web Engines Hack Fest. Uh, my name is Antonio. Uh, I am here with Julie, my colleague from Egalia. And we are going to present the work that we've been developing for the past uh, couple of years, which consists in making Chrome uh, to run natively on Wayland. <clears throat> so, so that's a kind of a status update that we're going to provide. Basically, uh, we've, uh, we've had that a similar presentation last year, but we were way behind in terms of uh, upstream status and etc. And we've uh, kept receiving uh, questions about the previous presentation and uh, people wondering about the status and etc. So we decided to give a quick status update. It should not be a too long presentation. Uh, but I think it should be enough to, you know, uh, let people know where we are and what our future plans are because things have, has cha have changed a lot uh, since last year. Uh, so a little bit of the agenda, we're going to just tell uh, a bit of the story behind the project. I think it's, uh, it's interesting uh, as well, a little bit. Then uh, what our solution is, the desktop integration that we've uh, worked on, where we are, what we've done, like major stuff that we've accomplished, uh, what we need to do still, and uh, we're gonna show a little bit, uh, we're gonna demonstrate a little bit of the solution as well. Uh, so basically the history, and I, th I think, wh why I think it is uh, interesting to tell that a little bit, I think it can, uh, it can be a kind of considered a successful case of someone contributing a known piece of trivial uh, work to the Chromium uh, project because uh, we had to deal with uh, keeping a downstream branch and we had to work a lot with influx uh, code that was changing on a daily basis by various people. Uh, so we had to define a rebase strategy during the project. We have to, to you know, the rebase sometimes more than uh, once per week. And we had people working on top of uh, our branch. So we had uh, Chromium tip of trunk, we have our own fork, we have people that forked our fork uh, doing stuff on top of it. So it, it kind of shows us uh, playing with various parties involved and uh, various different communities and companies and etc. So it was not easy. I think uh, we've made a long way. So that's why we came up with the title, uh, The Pathway to Chromium and Wayland. Uh, but anyways, uh, the, start, the, st the story starts like uh, a couple of years ago, as many people know. There were a pharma implementation from Intel, uh, and that implementation was also used in production uh, by some other people. But at some point, they decided to not continue with that. So they've entered maintenance mode. Uh, it stayed like this for like uh, six months, and nobody were doing anything. And that's when, after that, uh, we started uh, at Galia to rework that and to revamp the whole uh, effort and etc. So just to give an idea on the timeline, when they've entered this maintenance mode, we were in, in Chromium Milestone, uh, we were on Chromium M49, which means, uh, I think, end of uh, 2015 or so. To give an idea, the stable branch now is Chromium uh, 70, I guess? 69? Yeah, 69, so we, it's training milestones ahead, where we are now when they actually drop the project. There was some effort of people who took Intel's range and they rebased it for their own sake uh, and for, for their own you know, uh, health projects and etc. But it was not official. It was um, isolated effort by specific companies and etc. Uh, and we decided to be always as close as possible to tip of trunk again because we're running on top of you know bleeding edge code and etc. So we took a different approach than uh, the guys from uh, Intel in that sense. Our original approach, as I've mentioned, uh, it was based on uh, a what I believe to be a Chrome OS oriented solution, which is MOOS, uh, which stands for Module uh, UI Service. So basically, there was uh, an effort that was happening on Google. It was primarily targeting Chrome OS, and we extended that solution to work also on non Chrome OS uh, platform, which in this case means uh, Linux. So basically Intel and then uh, the, crew, the most basic approach. And we've, we've made a solution door-to-door -door, uh, based on this most architecture. So basically uh, we came up with the Google Fox and we've actually presented a full solution 
Uh, we've tried to minimize as much as possible the amount of patches. We try to keep the, the logicality of the fixes, uh, you know, as you know, clean as possible. So that was part of our rebate strategy as well. But then when we finally uh, presented to the folks uh, at Google, uh, we heard that uh, they were not 100% uh, sure if that was the proper direction. So we, uh, if extending most to work on non chromos platform, uh, in this case Linux, was the best way to go moving forward. So we had a solution, but it was not guaranteed to be the best one. And they've, uh, we sat together and we've defined the new uh, design, which is the one that we've uh, implemented afterwards. Uh, so basically we took an approach that was closer to the original Intel one, but it had uh, differences that were important enough that I think they are relevant and uh, it made it a different solution anyways. Uh, the design of the new solution is simpler than uh, the previous design based on Moose. Uh, and it kind of complies with the way Google foresees as the future of uh, desktop uh, Linux, uh, Chrome desktop Linux. So that's the story behind it. It's a little bit of uh, storytelling. Uh, but anyways, just to give you guys an idea, and that's very high level, of the different approaches uh, over the years on this project. On the left, you're going to see uh, the Intel approach, the regional one. <coughs> Uh, which again I consider successful. So basically uh, what we try to highlight here is that uh, there are mainly two boxes and these two boxes, the one on the top, the one at the bottom, they represent uh, the browser process and uh, the GPU process. And basically the, the, the biggest difference uh, between Intel's and ours is that on Intel's implementation the Wayland connection was established from within the GPU pro, uh, process. So that was considered not uh, a good approach in, in terms of security and current security. So basically, we'd be giving uh, the GPU process uh, access to you know, uh, stuff that not necessarily should be done. Uh, so it shouldn't be as privileged uh, in this case. Uh, after that, we've three, oh, and it used uh, the previous or the old IPC mechanism that Chromium had. Uh, and then we, on, on the middle, we have our secondary uh, approach, which again based on Moose. So as I've mentioned, it was a Chrome OS based solution, which involved uh, different process models. So we could have, for example, uh, the browser process and the UI service on the same process, one being a threat of the other. We could have uh, the UI process and sorry, the browser process and the UI service on different processes. Uh, and in all of this, uh, at least in our implementation, no matter if the UI and the browser, UI service and the browser process was together or not on the same process, uh, in our case, the GPU service was always a thread of the UI service, which again was not ideal in terms of security uh, and etc. So basically that's the secondary uh, design that we had. So basically the browser process, that's Aura, which is the main uh, UI toolkit of Chromium. Uh, we had a plumbing layer here that we call Aura Moves, and we have the new IPC mechanism, with, which named the Move uh, Mojo, which communicated with the UI service. Again, it could be either on the same process or as a thread of the browser process. And we were establishing the Wayland connection from here, from the UI service. Uh, the solution, again, as I mentioned, was a full solution, but we've decided to move to yet another design, which was a little bit closer to the original one, but the main difference is that uh, the Wayland connection is established from the browser process. So the, from the browser process, we start talking to uh, Wayland, we create uh, the Wayland displays and the Wayland connection itself. Uh, we handle all the input events and etc. So that's uh, from the security point of view and from the design point, point of view, it was closer to what Intel originally had. It was uh, easier to convince uh, the Google folks because it, is, it was similar uh, to what Chrome on Linux X11 looks like today. Uh, so that's the approach that we've been uh, working on and we've been following. As you can see, uh, the GPU uh, is fully isolated from the browser process. Uh, and that again was a secure, uh, security requirement from uh, the, the Chrome team uh, 
uh, as well. So just one more uh, complement of this. Yeah. When we've when we've switched from the middle approach to this one, the final one, we were able to you know drop half of the uh, patch that we had on GitHub simply because they were adapting most uh, for our needs. So we could clean up our repository. Uh, we have to redesign things as as I've said. We did a little bit of work to switch uh, stuff, you know, uh, to switch ozone from one architecture to another, but it wasn't a huge effort anyways. Uh, so basically, could reuse uh, the Wayland implementation as it was. It's sitting on device slash ozone slash platform. Uh, Wayland, uh, we had to keep some changes with small adaptations, and there was some stuff that we could just reuse as it was. So it wasn't a bit, you know, uh, it was not too hard to migrate, but uh, yeah, we had to do that. Um, and we, we've continued to support uh, Wayland, but at this point, when once we've reached, again, uh, feature parity against our previous implementation that was time for us to start upstreaming, uh, and yeah, I think uh, Julie can continue a little bit to tell about uh, where we are in terms of upstream and uh, all this stuff. Okay, so what is the current status of the project? Uh, actually, we obtained a lot of changes. Uh, I think almost all changes we have. Uh, so our streaming streaming allowed to run Ozone Wayland from uh, Chromium uh, top of the tree without any additional modification. So you can launch Chromium with Ozone Wayland, uh, Ozone Platform Wayland switch and open several multiple tabs and windows uh, for the uh, general uh, web browsing and open pop-up menu uh, for instance uh, when you move the when you click the uh, three dot button menu on the right side so you can see the pop-up menu and toolkit windows as well when you move to the mouse over something and uh, you can also have the separate GPU process I think I uh, we think it's a very significant feature uh, from the our test. And uh, we also obtain, uh, we obtain around eighty nine percent of the existing auto web and patches we have. Uh, as we gathering as, uh, as we are gathering the issue related to the auto web uh, if you are interested in it. So you can track the progress with the uh, code number of ID. And we upstream the GPU browser process split patches. Uh, we needed actually uh, some refactoring for the Ozone VRM uh, in order to share the uh, some code related to GBM, uh, which is used for Chrome OS. And we uh, uh, we obtain the most of our changes related to the GPU browser process. Uh, as for the as for the GPU browser process, uh, I'll talk later more detail. And we support also Windows tech, uh such as maximize, minimize, full screen, and uh, session story, and like uh, window bounds and plasma, and touch event and you can log content share with Ozone Wayland, uh, Ozone Platform Wayland switch and edit uh, menu, sub menu, window support. Uh, through our of uh, this kind of off training, uh, Antonio and Maxim became the owner for owner for Ozone Wayland now. Yeah, just just uh, one remark that I wanted to know. Uh, I wanted to tell you. So basically, when we look uh, at what we've accomplished upstream. You, you're not going to see anything that is uh, fancy or anything that is new. So, and that's primarily our goal. Our goal is that uh, the users of Chrome and Chromium on Linux simply feel no difference at all uh, against what is stock Chrome is today and what uh, stock Chrome with Wayland will be eventually. So basically, when we talk about our accomplishments, there isn't something fancy or new. The process model is the same as it used to be. The features like minimize, maximize, that, that's basic stuff. And if we make the user not to feel the difference when they actually launch Chrome, uh, that's what we consider that uh, we were successful. So we've made, uh, we've made it explicit, our uh, highlights in this case, but it's, it's clear that there isn't anything fancy and etc. 
I just wanted to give another uh, uh, remark, particularly on the content shell support. So basically, uh, on desktop, uh, where we have more processing power and more memory and etc., one can use Chrome uh, as it is, no matter if it's X11 or Wayland, because we do have processing power, so we can use all the resources available for us. Uh, why I wanted to highlight Content Shell? Because Wayland is being the primary or one of the primary display uh, protocols on embedded systems where generally we do not have uh, both of them available. So if you only have one of them, in this case Wayland, uh, most of these uh, embedding scenarios they work on top of the content layer of Chromium and adding Content Shell support was something uh, that we also considered mandatory so that people could start embedding this new solution uh, and etc. So, yeah, just wanted to say that. <laughs> so, continue to current uh, status. Uh, we support window interaction. Uh, uh, we keep it uh, date changes at downstream and the uh, patch currently is under review. I saw the patch got the uh, LGTM this morning. So, uh, we expect it, it, it will be landed soon. Yeah. And we uh, also support additional features such as drag and drop and copy paste. For drag and drop, we fully support at the downstream and uh, partially landed at the upstream. Uh, we plan to upstream the rest of them. And as for the copy and paste, uh, it's also partially landed at the upstream for the wayland part. But the other part, uh, we need to implement it, the rest of them. And as for the input type with file, uh, we needed, uh, we, we used file, uh, select file dialog extension from Chrome OS. Uh, actually, uh, because we needed when we are based dialog, uh, as, uh, because uh, some environment doesn't, uh, don't have the, uh, native UI toolkit such as GTK. So that's why we uh, use when UI based dialog. Uh, but it caused a huge uh, bunch of changes. So we created a feature request at upstream in order to get agreement from the upstream. Uh, so we continue to working on that. Yeah, about uh, dialog specifically, as Julie mentioned, it's a uh, it's a simple use case again, but it, it might involve uh, a big change depending on the direction that we ultimately decided to take. Uh, especially because Chrome X11 on Linux today, they basically uh, always uh, GDK free. However, for using or for, for sharing dialogues to the user, they have actually still rely on GDK, so they kind of open the shared library and make calls, so the GDK show. Uh, GDK shows dialogues and they can input in and out uh, content from it, like open file, upload file, this stuff. That could be one way, and maybe that's the easiest path for us to take uh, for Linux on desktop, Wayland. But again, for embedded, where, like for example, let's say a system on embedded uses only Qt, we would definitely not have GDK available, so that would be not the path that we could take. So. That's where, why we're exploring a uh, web UI based approach with, which is currently Chrome OS specific, as Julie said, and it might involve bigger changes to make you know, the whole feature available for non Chrome OS platforms. So it's, it's a long way, although the feature is pretty simple. But, yeah. So, uh, GPU browser process, uh, we have uh, according to the Chromium multi process model, uh, we created a graphic buffer in GPU process and deliver the each file descriptor to browser process and set it to the uh, wayland buffer and wayland surface. So we call it GPU browser <coughs> process split. So the goal is to run a separate GPU process and be able to use GPU memory buffer framework. And we expect it that it will help to improve overall performance. So how to accomplish the GPU browser process? Uh, we used uh, GBM, uh, General Buffer Management, GBM, with DRM render node on the GPU process, and import the each file descriptor and deliver them to the browser process. Uh, we also using uh, GWT Linux DMA buffer protocol 
in order to create the Wayland buffer based on the uh, DMA buff uh, file descriptor. Uh, we also use a uh, Wayland surface buffer damage in order to know, uh, identify the dirty app need to be updated. And we also using Mojo IPC to communicate between process such as ground process and GPU process. So how to create the buffer? Uh, from the GPU process, uh, GBM Pixman Wayland buffer will create the buffer uh, using the GBM. And then we try to deliver each file description to browser process through the Mojo IPC. And in browser process, once it gets the message from the GPU process, uh, we will uh, try to set the uh, try to set uh, each file descriptor to Wayland buffer and Wayland surface through the GWP uh, Linux DMA buff protocol. So how to swap the buffer? In GPU process, uh, GBM surface release Wayland called schedule buffer swap with uh, some callback uh, functions. And in browser process, once you get uh, um, the message for scheduling, uh, Wayland buffer management uh, calls several Wayland API, such as the uh, Wayland surface damage buffer, Wayland surface attach, Wayland frame callback, WP presentation feedback, and listener. And listener. And well, then surface commit uh, in order to know the when we need to update the surface or when we need to update the dirty uh, Once it, uh, it gets some uh, callback through the Wayland, such as on frame callback on presentation feedback, we deliver the message to GPU process, and then GPU process will update the dirty or some screen surface. So basically, we were able to gain uh, performance. We were able to comply uh, with Google process, you know, a model, the, the requirement that they had. Uh, and uh, we were able to make the browser process, which the one that responds to the user, uh, less overloaded, and in that way, uh, fast responses for the users and etc. Uh, uh, so, what is for the future plan? So, we will enable native GPU memory buffer support for to get a better performance with CSS DR during the actual the patch is on the review at this moment. Yeah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and we will improve the GPU browser process split, uh, such as adding missing support for presentation display. That patch is also landed while we are preparing this presentation. And we are also planning to add Vulkan support. And, and support tech dragging. And we are planning also to obtain all of the rest of the patches for Ozo Wayland patches and Ozo Ethereum patches. The reason why we are working on Ozo Ethereum and Azure is that the uh, the interface, Ozo interface especially, added by us uh, reasonable, uh, not only in Wayland, but also Ozo, uh, the other platforms such as Ozo and C11 as well. And 
Also, we expect that there is no uh, lack of functionality loss or feature uh, performance loss. So we need to, uh, we will keep to check the performance or functionality. Yeah, just a uh, one remark about this uh, in bold, this item in bold, is that we we were working on a ozone platform, right? Uh, but the current Chrome on Linux works not on top of ozone. It's, it's a plain implementation that does not know anything about ozone. However, if you want to make that uh, primarily, uh, you know, uh, a primary solution, so if you have uh, Google Chrome or Chromium with Wayland distributor, we have to work out both the Ozone Wayland implementation, we have to work out the Ozone X11 implementation, and we have to migrate Chrome on X11 uh, from non Ozone to the, no, to the Ozone code path. And then we're going to have a one a single Linux build that we run, uh, one single binary that we run either on. Wayland or on X11, being both of them Ozone backends, and the, the choice will be made by Chrome itself uh, or runtime. So that's the just scenario. We get rid of the whole uh, known Ozone X11 Chrome of today. We actually do not get rid. We migrated to be Ozone X11, and we're going to have two siblings: Ozone Wayland, Ozone X11, and that will be a one single Chrome build that we would at runtime choose either one backhand or the other. Uh, so it's still, we've accomplished uh, a lot. We're pretty much upstream, so 90, 80, 90%, right? Maybe now more after the, after the, uh, the presentation. But there's still a lot of uh, work to do to actually make the final user to download uh, Chromium from Ubuntu, whatever distribution, and it goes with Wayland by default. It's, it's really a long way. I'll go. And continue to future plan. Uh, we will uh, support platform screen. Actually, the patch was under you, but I uh, it's also got the HTM. Okay. And we will add clipboard auto support and support uh, multi screen and non English keyboard layout. And we will help to enable testing uh, top of tree billboard. Uh, such a unicast browser concept because the current billboard uh, uh, doesn't have the auto valent configuration yet. And we are planning to integration our auto valent uh, chromium with AGR. AGR is uh, automotive grade Linux. It's a kind of <laughs> uh, uh, framework platform uh, for automotive. Uh, we will analyze and uh, fixing performance problem for the Chromium in AGR. And uh, we will also support uh, the Chromium as a web engine for web runtime. So yeah, we we we're going to try uh, to demonstrate a little bit, uh, but we 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 thought of doing that on desktop and on uh, on our primarily uh, target platform. Uh, but on desktop, I think we, we might skip because, uh, for example, the, all the presentation has been uh, done on Chrome, on Wayland, off of tip of trunk, so there were no extra patches here, and we've presented, so it works full stream, it works. Uh, I figured why it stuck a little bit ago, it was because I'm building Chrome uh, here in parallel. <laughs> yeah, it's building here, you cannot see, but... Um, my machine cannot handle it, so I just get rid of it. So it's not because it's slow or anything. It's my machine that's slow. Uh, but we, we can demonstrate that on, on our uh, private, primary uh, the platform.
So basically, what we are running here is that we are running uh, AGL, the Automotive Grid Linux uh, platform, on the Renesas R Car M3 board. And yeah, that's Chromium. Without the GPU cross Yeah, that's Chromium on Leyland without the GPU split, right? So, yeah. yeah, so the GPU is running in process, so the same process as the browser process. We can reach uh, 25, I guess, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, do you have uh, with the GPU? Yeah, we So we reach 25, it's okay, sure, in terms of uh, uh, frames per second. Yeah, but now it has the GPU, the browser GPU split that uh, Judy uh, described earlier. So by that, we are uh, able to gain an extra 10 frames per second on, uh, on the performance. But we were working very close to uh on how we can improve that. And we figured, since Chrome is a, such a robust uh, use case and task for them, they figured actually uh, some problems on their own uh, driver. Graphics driver, which should gain us uh, an extra, you know, uh, boost in performance as well. And uh, GPU memory buffer feature uh, is disabled with this board because a uh, lack of some functionality. Yeah, which they are also working on. Yeah. Uh, do you want to show the lecture one? This is a, a collection of uh, WebGL uh, websites, oh, sorry, demos. Uh, let me just pick it up randomly. Yeah, uh, the performance is pretty much accept acceptable. Uh, I think it's pretty good, in fact. And it tends to be way better. So that's all Chrome and Tip of Trunk uh, built for uh, ARM. And uh, we have browser, GPU split, we have things ongoing. Uh, so it tends to be way better in you know the next milestones or the next coming months. So this is not built in really small, right? Say again. This is not built in really small. Not built in. Built in. Did they see it release or are they not okay? That's it. Should be released. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I think we can go back. Okay, I think uh, that was it from our side. Uh, again, I am Antonio. Maxim is one of the main developers as well. Maxim is off, he cannot attend. Uh, and uh, Julie, if you guys have any questions either now or offline, yeah, we have to continue the conversation. If no questions, thank you very much. <laughs>